Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Oshina. I wanted to do like an author overview of Charles Martin because after I discovered his books, I think he is such a brilliant writer. He writes things that are about real life and he he turns it into something like so hopeful and encouraging. And I think his books are amazing and I just want to promote them. And I think it's fun to to see like how many books he's got 13 books out right now and I don't own all of them so I don't have them all to show but I'll show you the ones that I've read and that I have and I wanted to just talk about them and talk about why I love him as an author and why I think more people should read his books because I think he appeals to a wide audience so many of his books span across tons of different topics um, it's all adult as far as I've seen. It's completely clean, but also doesn't like gloss over topics like he definitely goes into detail and he talks about the hard stuff, but in a respectful, mature way. So I just want to promote his books and so I'm going to talk about the books and how I discovered him and all of that. So it all started actually because the movie for The Mountain Between Us came out. My dad randomly bought it and watched it probably because who's in it it's Kate Winslet and Idris Elba so we watched the movie and it said that it was based on a novel and I was like oh cool it's based on a novel and I love survival stories so especially when it's a girl and a guy and they end up falling in love from it <laughs> so I was like that book probably is amazing and then as a grad present my dad bought me three books of Charles Martin including this one so I started out by reading this book so it's kind of thanks to the movie really that I discovered Charles Martin's books. So The Mountain Between Us is the first book that I read by Charles Martin and I was immediately so impressed because his writing is really good and when we talk about like good writing sometimes it's subjective and it's hard to like know like what, when I say it's good writing that might not mean anything but what I mean by good writing is he really like gets you into the head of mind of the characters. It feels so immersive the way he structures his sentences and the things that he says. It's so immersive and that's what I think is good writing. Um, he is so descriptive as well and it's really easy to picture exactly what's happening and he just describes the feelings of the heart so precisely that I know exactly what he's talking about. So his writing he does like so far in every book that I've read from him it's like that where it's just like I feel like I'm with these characters and I can feel what they're feeling so I really like that um, with the mountain between us it's about two characters that are trying to f and I, I forget the places but anyways they're in the States trying to fly to whatever city there's a bad storm and all the planes are cancelled so these two like randomly meet and they're like hey let's charter a, a plane who will take us to where we need to go because they both ended up needing to go to the same place um, so they didn't know each other but they both were on this plane so right at the beginning like while they're on this plane the pilot has a heart attack and dies and the plane crashes over snowy mountains in the middle of nowhere and so it's these two plus a dog and they are in the middle of nowhere, they're at the top of this snowy mountain and they have to survive and try to get back to civilization because no one is going to find them because they chartered a plane and it's, so it's like not being monitored and stuff. But really kept me interested when it felt like, oh, how much longer can we read about them walking in the freezing cold? You got to see bits of their life and why they are the way they are and then see their relationship grow together. and. I was just so impressed. I was like, I want to read every book by him. I really enjoyed this. It was such a quick read and yet it's like a fairly big book, but the, the font is like pretty big as well. But yeah, so this is the first book that I read by him and I loved it. So this is the other book that my dad bought me, Long Way Gone. And if you know me and my channel, you know that this is one of my favorite books of all time. Um, so I read this a couple months after I read The Mountain Between Us and I didn't really get what it was about. The back is a little vague. You follow 
this boy, this guy, boy, guy, um, it does flashbacks a lot, but you follow this guy who was trying to make it big in Nashville as a musician, and you just follow his life. His dad uh, was a pastor, and it's kind of like you see why his life is the way it is now based on his decisions he made when he was younger with his dad. And this book is like a prodigal son retelling, and it was the most beautiful take on that parable that I've ever heard. There were a few things that I think he took liberty on, like he does talk about angels a little bit, and I have never experienced, like, well, that I know of, um, a, like a direct communication or whatever with an angel, but I do think it happens, and so angels are present in this book and it's just so beautiful so yeah um this is one that i think christians will get the most out of just because they'll know the story that it's based on um and then also if you're from nashville you will probably love this because it's all about music it's a they talk about the ryman a lot i've never been there but i know that's a, like a really popular theater i think or arena i'm not sure so then i was like okay charles martin you're one of my favorite authors now i need to read everything by you so this book sealed the deal. I was book two and I loved it. The next book that I read was Unwritten. This one made me think, okay, it, it does depend on if you relate to the topic or not. Because you follow this really famous woman who can't live her life anymore because it's like just too much. Like she's so famous that she can't go anywhere. Um, her life is on display for everyone to see and she just she's done and she tries to commit suicide and then you're also following this guy who there's a secret around him there's usually one character that like there's a secret and as the reader you're trying to figure out like what is what is going on there um so anyways this guy the two characters both know the same catholic priest and they both go to him. She confesses, hey, I'm gonna commit suicide. And so the priest sends this guy to stop her. And then instead of committing suicide, she fakes her death. And she just hangs out with this guy, um, trying to like decide what she wants to do with her life. And so it's just like her finding the will to live again, and him um, also kind of coming to terms with things that has, have happened to him, and why he kind of went off the grid and they both help each other like realize why they want to continue to live. <laughs> so it's a lot of them like kind of living their day-to-day -day life and and little things happen that like either make them take steps back or steps forward to wanting to live um, and wanting to like be in the public again. And so I just didn't relate to any of it and there just wasn't quite enough for me to like grip onto it and, and love it. So this is my least favorite book by him, but I still think a lot of people would like the topic. The writing was still amazing, like I still read about these characters and it was still engaging, but just in the end I was like, okay, not my favorite book. So there's that. Then I read A Life Intercepted and this book focuses on football, so if you like football you will like this book. There's some kind of like scandal that we're trying to figure out what happened. Um, this famous football player um, was in a scandal and he went to jail and I forget for how long but it was quite a few years and he had a wife but she she believed that, that the scandal was real even though he denied it straight out he said I did not do this but there was so much evidence against him that he did get found guilty and his wife ended up believing it so she wants nothing to do with him and he gets out and there's like a restraining order so he's not allowed to talk to his wife or like be near her but he like secretly um goes to her and she figures out that he's around and she has this like prodigy up and coming teenager football player and she wants her ex-husband to train him to like become the best football player and he does it even though it breaks his parole i think is that the word <laughs> and so there's a lot of talk about their drills and like just different football terminology um but the real part is us slowly figuring out what he was con like convicted of and then what actually happened because i think 
we're meant to to know from the beginning that he didn't actually do what he was found guilty of so it's always like well who actually did it and what happened because it did look like he did it um and it's like rebuilding his relationship with his wife again um i found this book really fascinating to read and i really enjoyed it so i would recommend this one a lot um there is a lot of football talk so if you really don't like sports maybe you wouldn't like this but it still like talks about the heart and the emotions that go along with like scandals and um relationships and like how to come back from something that probably would have just destroyed a marriage um and just different like twists that happen near the end as well i thought it was really well done um i really like this book so yeah i would recommend it um this is another really good one so one of the books that I don't have to hold up because I lent it out is When Crickets Cry. I recently read this one. Um, so I will link the the video that I talked about it in it, my wrap up or something. This book worked because I do like hearing about like medical talk, but maybe if you don't, you won't like it. But you follow this guy who was a doctor and his wife had a heart condition and it, there was no cure so but he was like obsessed with finding a cure and obsessed with like trying to make her life better and make her live because it would kill her eventually like she when you have that kind of heart problem you have to just have a transplant or it doesn't get better you follow like flashbacks again like with his life of how he l learned all of this doctor stuff how he and his wife got together um but then you're in present present day and he is like so depressed it's like it's pretty intense and it like it all makes sense and the way he writes it, it's like you totally understand where this guy's coming from but it's, he's in a really small town in Georgia and he sees this little girl um, in front of like a shop selling lemonade and he can tell from like the way she's dressed and the like equipment that's around her that she has a heart condition and then she has like a bow or something something or like a ribbon um, gets blown into the street and she runs after it and she gets hit by a car and this happens like right away um, in the book and he is there to like make her live basically and so that starts his relationship with her and her aunt and so they are kind of his reintroduction to life um, and there are a lot of details of heart surgery and a lot of doctor terms um, but I found it fascinating and I really liked it. Also I should say from all of the books that I've talked about besides Long Way Gone none of them have a direct faith link in them like none of them are Christians per se like God and Jesus are not mentioned but there is like an underlying faith I don't know like morality that is there and like just like life that if you do have faith you would recognize it but it's n it's so subtle like I don't think non-christians would notice it so that's what I like about his books is they're not preachy in any way and they barely even have like direct faith in them long way gone does um, just because it's based on a Bible story and then when crickets cry does as well okay and those are all the books that I've actually read by Charles Martin so not a lot um, and there's so much more to read so I'm really excited the one that I'm currently reading is what if it's true and this book uh, came out in January of this year and it is his first Christian nonfiction and it is so good I am only I'm only this far in he is basically he's like retelling stories about Jesus from the Gospels and the way he does it is so beautiful and it's all meant to like heal a part of human brokenness and he just talks about different interactions Jesus had throughout his life with different people and how he healed them um, so he talks about like real stuff and what I love is at the end of every chapter he has a prayer and he's like if you pray this and like mean it God will change your life and things will not be the same because the power of Jesus's name and like asking him for help is actually real and I love it. So I've been really enjoying this book. Yeah, I would really recommend this. If you're a Christian, you would love it. Okay, and then I own three books that I have not read by him, but I'm very excited to. So 
The first book is Water, Water From My Heart. This is the next one that I want to read. I find that the back of Charles Martin's books are really vague and it's best just to start reading them. You can maybe like read the back just to like know maybe what you're getting into but I find most of the time it's really vague and so you might as well just read the book to know what it's about. So I've got this one and then his second most recent book is Send Down the Rain and this one I think is about someone um, from the US Army and like his time in the war and stuff so and I've heard really good things about it. Then the last one that I have is Wrapped in Rain um, and this one is one of his older ones. This came out in 20 or 2005 I think yeah 2005 so again I don't know what this one's about and it is really vague but I'm really excited so yeah these are the three that I haven't read and he's got more that I don't have. Yeah, and a lot of his books are on book outlet, so check them out there. I see Long Way Gone on there all the time, so that's really cool. Definitely check it out if that sounds good to you. But those are all of the books that I have of Charles Martin. I just think he's so such a good writer. I think he's doing great things. So if you liked this video, please let me know. If you've read any Charles Martin books, let me know. And if there's one that I didn't talk about or like that I haven't read, um, hype it up for me. I'd love to hear. And yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. I will see you in my next one. Bye.